we will now move on to the next session that is education fair session we have five university japanese university presentations explaining about the courses admission criteria fee and many other aspects they uh, basically explain the opportunity of higher education in japan today i welcome Mr. Yasuhiro Yonehara, the first secretary, Embassy of Japan, New Delhi, to present about the higher education opportunities and study in Japan. Over to you, Yonehara-san. Dozo. Hello, everyone. I'm Yonehara with the Embassy of Japan in India. Nice to meet you. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to make a presentation about studying in Japan. Uh, it is surprising to see so many people joining this session and I am very glad that many people are interested in studying in Japan. My presentation today, today is divided into three parts. One part is about the situation of Indian people who study abroad. Second one is about the merits of studying in Japan. And finally, the third part is about how to search for a Japanese school and supervisor and the uh, scholarship for yourself. After my presentation, representatives of some universities will explain about themselves. And then uh, there will be a question and answer session. If you have any questions for me, you may please ask during the question time. Now, let me begin. India is the second largest country sending overseas students to the world after China. However, I think most Indian people Indians have not chosen Japan to study abroad, considering the size of the country. Now let us take a look at, the, at this data. According to my research, Indian students studying in Japan account for only 0.3% of Indian students studying, in abroad, studying abroad, which is ranked 20th in the list of study abroad destinations in India. It is very low compared to other developed, developed countries, South Asia countries, and Southeast Asian countries. Please have a look at the table on the right. 3.2% uh, United States students who study abroad are studying in Japan. Japan ranks six in the US. In UK, uh, it's 1.5% uh, uh, and uh, 14th. In Australia, it is 3.3% and six. In Bangladesh, it is 6.1% and six. But uh, in India, in Japan is only 0.3% and 20th as I just mentioned. Why is it so? Do Indian people dislike Japan? I don't think so. I guess it is because Indian people are not much aware about the merit of studying in Japan. I am confident that the number of Indians who want to study in Japan will increase if they can correctly understand Japan and uh, the significance of studying in Japan. So today, I would like to help you deepen your understanding and about, about studying in Japan. Uh, I would like to explain about Japan. Japan is the third largest economy in the world. This is well known. And in terms of science and technology, the number of Nobel Prize winners from Japan is 28. It ranks uh, six in the world. Uh, and number one in Asia. In addition, there are various excellent facilities in Japan, uh, excellent research facilities in Japan, such as the supercomputer Fugaku of Riken, you know, which is number one in the world now. 
and the Kagura gravitational, gravitational wave telescope of the University of Tokyo. In the world, university ranks, rankings, uh, 41 Japanese universities figure among the, among the top 1,000. In terms of uh, culture and uh, lifestyle, there are 23 World Heritage Sites in Japan. And there is a variety of seasons in the year, and there are beautiful nature feature, features like seas and mountains, and the fresh ingre ingredients that come from them create various tasty dishes. In Japan, there are approximately 33,000 companies that have been in business for over 100 years, accounting for 40% of the world's total such companies. In Japan, there is a culture of valuing things, but companies are also rooted in society. And if you will be hired by, by a Japanese company in the future, it can be safely said hey, that there is very low prob probability that you will ever lose your job. The distance between Tokyo and Delhi is about 5,850 kilometers, which is about the same, uh, same distance from Delhi as Berlin, Germany but much closer than London, Sydney, or New York. About the situation of Japanese schools. There are many schools uh, in Japan, so I'm sure there are definitely a suitable, and super, super, uh, suitable school and supervisor for you. Over 300,000 international students are presently studying in Japan. As the Japanese government is trying to increase the number of international students, so which is pro providing really many kinds of support to foreign students. Next, I would like to explain the merit of studying in Japan. In Japan, the minimum standards uh, for schools are set by the government, such as the right of teachers to students, the size of facilities and the kinds of, kind of facilities to be established. So the educational environment is secured no matter which school you choose. Of course, many schools have educational environments that go well beyond those standards. And most importantly, Japan is safe. Japan is known as a good place to live in with its low crime rate. Uh, the prob probability of encountering a murder in Japan is less than one tenth of that in India. <laughs> and even if you happen to misplay something, it will be returned to you most of the times. And uh, uh, Japan's public transportation system boasts, boasts uh, of its um, time, departure, and arrival, and helps you reach your destination safely and securely. Compared uh, to other developed countries, educational costs and living expenses are relatively low. Could you, could you check your uh, and could you check out the academic fee? National University's tuition, tuition fee is approximately uh, 383,000 rupee per year. But um, though there's a, there are different from school to schools, uh, you should check the website of each school. And uh, living expenses are approximately uh, 63,000 rupees for one month. I have tried to introduce you to the merits of studying in Japan, but there are many other good things to consider. 
Please do your own research about Japan and Japanese schools at the very least. Uh, next. Uh, when you think about studying in Japan, it is also important for you to look for a suitable school and supervisor in Japan. Now, there are many such sites to find them. Let me introduce some of them. For searching schools, I recommend three, three sites. First, there is an Excel file in the website Study in Japan. You can download uh, their uh, Excel files called School Search from this site. I will omit the detail of how to use it, but you can, you can easily search you by using various parameters such as research field, language to learn, and information on entrance examination. Please download it. Next is website uh, Japan Study Support. You can get more information about the universities and specialized training college and uh, their departments on this site. Uh, finally, uh, there is a website and Japanese, Japanese colleges and university portraits. On this site, you can search for a university that suits you based on various conditions. Please try going through these sites. Next, looking for a supervisor. I recommend the website of Sini Articles, C-I-N-N-I, N-I-I. -N -I. You can search these uh, this, uh, and papers written by Japanese researchers on this site. Next, website research map. Here you can search for researchers by name, by their name or research field. With this search site, you can try to find the university that is suitable for you and uh, supervisor for you who you can who can who can give you precise guidance on your research and studies. Next, I would like to explain about uh, the scholarships. There are, there are many kinds of scholarships available in Japan. First, uh, next scholarship. This, this has seven programs, but three of them are not open for recruitment. So today I will, I will explain about the other four programs. Uh, first, research. Research is for doing study, doing study for study and research in master course and doctor course or non-regular course in Japanese university. Next, undergraduate. Undergraduate is a program for those who want to study in undergraduate course, undergraduate course of Japanese university. But students can study in around 80 national universities only. They can't choose private university or public university. And uh, college, of, college of Technology and Specialized Training College are programs for those who want to study in specific types of schools. And uh, uh, the scholarship. Just uh, provides Monbukak show owner scholarship for privately financed international students. And this is for international students who were accepted by a Japanese university, a graduate school, junior college, college of technology, special training college, and university prepar preparatory course designated by MEXT. This scholarship offers uh, 48,000 yen, uh, about uh, 34,000 rupee per month to 5,000 students. And there are many other scholarships sponsored by local governments, private foundations, etc. And just so uh, has issued a detailed pamphlet titled 
uh, scholarship for international students in Japan 2020 to 2021. That is posted on the website Study in Japan. So please check it. And uh, besides, most universities offer reduction or exemption of tuition fees for academically excellent students. Please check the website of each school. And finally, and what I have explained today is just a very small part of the merits of studying in Japan. I believe there are many other advantages of studying in Japan and living in Japan. Please leave your understanding of Japan by talking with Japanese people or people who have previously studies in, studied in Japan. Also, uh, today uh, there will be introdu introductions of various universities in Japan after my presentation. Please listen to the stories of various universities and uh, choose the universities uh, that suits you the most. I am sure that studying and research in researching in Japan offers an excellent experience and can an end can become a great first step for your future career. So let us try our best to do it. This concludes my explanation. I hope my explanation will help everyone. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Yonehara-san, for providing a detailed information on the opportunities and studying in Japan. Thank you once again for joining us today. We are now moving to the presentations from the University of Tokyo, Kyoto University, Kyoto University of Advanced Science, Ritsumeikan University, and Ritsumeikan Asia Pacific. We have Firstly, uh, we have uh, Mr. Yasuyuki Miyauchi-san. Okay, thank you. Thank uh, you uh, very much for uh, Ms. Anjali. Yeah, he is the director uh, of University of Tokyo India office. He will be accompanied by Ms. Sakshi Roy, the program assistant, the University of Tokyo India office. Sir Miyauchi-san, Dozo, you can present about your university, sir. Okay. Miss Angela, thank you very much for, for the wonderful opportunity for us. My name is Yasuyuki Miyauchi, the director of the University of Tokyo in the office. Our school, the University of Tokyo, was established in 1877, oldest university in Japan. And it is still one of the best universities in Japan, but also in the world. Our headquarters is located in Tokyo, the capital of Japan. There are 10 faculties, 15 graduate schools, 26 research institutes and centers. Total 40,000 students and uh, academic and administration staff working there. In Japan, the University of Tokyo is not just a university, but a real engine of the Japanese society. So it attracts a lot of talent from Japan and the world. We have a university alumni that are so many leaders, total 10 Nobel Prize winners, total 15 Japanese prime ministers, there are so many a Japanese giant company CEO. I'd like to welcome prospective Indian students to Tokyo campus. Okay, gentlemen, I'd like to turn over the mic to Ms. Sakshi. Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Sakshi Roy. I've been working with the University of Tokyo India office from 1.5 years. Uh, in my presentation, I'm looking forward to talking with you today about opportunities for higher education in Japan. So I'll just quickly share with you about our back background. 
So the University of Tokyo India office has been established to create awareness on education opportunities in Japan among Indian students and encourage them to apply to study in Japan. There are many premier education institutions in Japan and are focused on attracting Indian students to look at Japan as an educational destination. So India is the most important country in Japan for Japan in terms of academic partnership, hope to increase the number of Indian students studying in Japan. So our office is one of the overseas offices for shared utilization by university to open in India under Global 30 project. So we are providing comprehensive information on Japanese universities, including uh, enrollment, seminars, and entrance examinations. We organize education fairs throughout India. We manage committees for coordinators for studying Japan. We, we promote Japan-India teachers and faculty exchange. So our office maintains the network of Indian and Japanese alumni of the University of Tokyo. We have alumni association across all over the world. So our alumni members network, uh, network supports overseas education, research and related projects. We have a uh, total 56 overseas alumni association to facilitate studying Japan global network project. Okay, so Japan universities have a global reputation for excellence and innovation with over 10 institutions ranked in the world top 200 by QS World University ranking 2021. The University of is ranked number one in Japan and 24th in the world. As you can see in the table, there are 60 plus, there are 60 plus national universities, 90 plus public universities and approximately 600 plus private universities offering variety of programs in Japan. Many Japanese universities offer courses in English in various disciplines and does have world's best research facilities. Okay, now, now I will talk about some Utokyo India exchange. Uh, in October 1957, Jawahar, Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru of India visited Japan and visited our university. At that time, he gifted this precious painting of Rabindranath Tagore. Mr. Narayan Murthy, founder of Infosys Limited, he is a member of advisory board and president counseling of the University of Tokyo. So Todai has joined the IIT Hyderabad Consortium in 2009. So the University of Tokyo offers several exchange programs with IIT. So UTokyo launched IJEP, that is the Inter-University Exchange Program, in collaborates with several schools, including Indian Institute of IIT and Indian Institute of Management, and works in cooperation with government agencies and related companies. So this program is specially for IIT students. In 2017, oh, okay. In 2017, JIEPP Japan India Exchange Platform program was launched, and it is another comprehensive exchange program by U, U Tokyo in collaboration with IIT and leading companies. ESCP India 2021. So this is an engineering summer education program. The, again, this program is intended for students collaborating Indian institution. Uh, okay. So uh, in Japan, a bachelor's course, uh, bachelor's program lasts for four years. It will take two years to complete master's program, and it will take. Uh, uh, minimum three years to earn a PhD degree. So this number vary uh, depending on the faculty, like for medicines and veterinary sciences, it will take four years to earn a degree.
you uh, student status you can enroll in our course to earn a degree as a regular student or if you are not studying to earn a degree you can enroll as a research credit earning audit student most of the japanese universities allow two intakes so this is to give you a general idea for spring semester application process start from september to october and for autumn semester application process start from march to april okay so uh, this is basically the steps you should follow when uh, when preparing for application to graduate schools in japan most graduate schools for both de non degree students and degree seeking students require a research plan so firstly you will have to prepare the research plan then you will have to find the professors in in your field of interest contact them send them a letter of recommendation from your current or previous academic advisor discuss your research plan and then obtain the consent to be accepted into their laboratory so once you are sure this is the right program for you submit all the uh, submit the application form including required documents okay so a key part of your application when you are enrolling in a graduate school is your research proposal we have got so many queries uh, from students about how to prepare the research plan and also there is any specific format for preparing research plan so whether you are applying for a self funded or studentship you should you should follow the standard format of research plan so this would be a uh, format for your research plan so you can note down for your reference okay so career plan in science stream these are some pre arrival scholarship for uh, indian students japan embassy recommended scholarship max railway board quota japan international cooperation agency and for self financing students there is a honor scholarship and private foundation scholarship so if you are planning to do undergraduate in japan then you can apply for max scholarship and privately financed uh, student can apply for honors and private foundation scholarship for students who wants to do masters in japan they can apply for uh, any of the scholarship uh, for doctoral courses in japan you may apply for max jika and uh, go for self financed studentship so japan society for promotions of science so funding is provided to encourage the support to support the doctoral students and post doctoral researchers under jsps research fellowship for if you want to if you want to go for teaching and research then you can find a position with jrec portal so it is a uh, informative informative portal site that supports career development and skill building of researchers so you can choose to uh, work on a tenure track or fixed term basis okay so japan has adopted measures to focus on increasing the number of students pursuing degree in the stem field that is science technology engineering and maths so employment rates are higher for stem graduates than all other graduates opportunity is opportunities are great as all the professional services and industries want want stem talent so there is in need of international stem students na nationwide so these are the two internship programs for undergraduates uh, offered by university of tokyo india office so u trip and ut sip u this is an intensive summer research program for undergraduate who have a keen interest in pursuing ms or phd degree in future so as you can see the uh, the application process period is from november to january 
so unfortunately uh, utrip 2021 has been suspended due to covid 19 so please keep checking our website for further information UTSIB the University of Tokyo summer internship program in Kashiwa this program provides research internship opportunity in the field of natural sciences and social sciences it is a 6 week summer program for undergraduate students so as you can see the deadline for session 2021 has been over the students who are interested can apply for uh, next session 2022 okay global science course so this is an undergraduate transfer program in the school of science at the university of tokyo so this program is for those who have successfully completed or will be completing their first two years of undergraduate study at an accredited ted higher education institutions for this program you must have completed basic undergraduate level classes in chemistry so all students admitted in gsc undergraduate transfer program will be awarded the faculty of science scholarship so student uh, so you will receive a, you will be receiving 1 lakh 50000 yen per month during your time as a gsc student okay so masters research course in japanese university with max scholarship for indian railway officers so we support applicants from indian railways railways engineering education program gives engineers a chance to be part of this economic transformation so every year moc is signed between japanese government and ministry of railways provide an opportunity for indian railway engineers to pursue two year masters and research courses in the field of high speed rail technology and related subjects in japanese universities with max scholarship so there will be a masters degree course and research degree course under the scholarship so we anticipate that this collaboration will lead to an increase in exchange of students from india please note that application deadline for scholarship is 15th march 2021 okay so this could be one of the good reasons why to study in japan japan has it all bustling cities with cutting edge fashion and technology cool and beautiful snow cap peaks tropical beaches 23 world heritage sites hot springs cherry blossom and summer festival so if you want an extraordinary experience while studying then japan is the country for you so thank you so much for your interest and attention if anyone who like more information or has questions please feel free to contact us at this uh, mentioned email address we would be happy to assist you so this is the web link of our India office website and this is the email address. Uh, you can also like and follow us on uh, face or uh, follow us on Facebook to get the more updates regarding study in Japan. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Sakshi San. Miyauchi San, honto ni arigato gozaimashita. uh thank you um, once again for uh, giving a detailed information about the scholarships internships undergraduate programs master programs and the opportunity for the railway officers to do masters and research course is very interesting sakshi san look forward for that as well thank you thank you so we now move on to the kyoto university Ms Mako Kawano the international education administrator is here to present on Kyoto University over to you Mako san yes thank you very much for the introduction hello everyone i'm mako kawano from the admissions assistance office at kyoto university let me start with the university overview kyoto university was established in 1897 as the second oldest national university in Japan. 
Since then, the university has a policy and a strong atmosphere of academic freedom. That is what makes us a top leading research university in Japan. But our reputation is not limited within the country. Kyoto University is highly ranked in various global rankings, such as 33rd on QS and 54th on Times Higher Education. Also, our researchers were awarded 11 Nobel Prize to this day. In fact, this is the largest number among Asian universities at the moment. In addition to Nobel Prize, we have two Field Medal Laureate and one Gauss Medal Laureate. Field Medal and Gauss Medal Prizes are regarded as one of the highest honors a mathematician can receive. So these international awards show that our students have opportunities to learn directly from the world's top level researchers. This is a map of Japan. The university has three campuses across broader Kyoto city area. In addition, there are 44 of campus research and educational facilities in Japan and 61 abroad. Our students will have access to utilize these facilities for their studies. These are the pictures taken in Kyoto in spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Kyoto is the ancient capital city, which remains as a cultural heart of the country. It's a very popular tourist destination. You can feel the beauty of the country everywhere in the city. But Kyoto is not only about the historical site and the traditional culture, but also it is a modern city with many global companies such as Nintendo, a famous game company. The city has good places for shopping and to eat out. So you can enjoy both Japanese traditional culture and the modern aspect in the city. And also, Kyoto is a student-friendly city. There are over 30 universities and around 10% of the population is actually college student. So there is everything that the students need. As I said first, Kyoto University is a research intensive university. We have many, many interesting researchers covering broad areas. On our website, we have discoveries from which you can see some of these researches. Research news is accessible by scrolling down on our top page. It is frequently updated, so please try accessing for some new discoveries. Let's now take a closer look at some of our professors and their laboratories. First up is Professor Tsuji from the Department of Material Science and Engineering. He studies nano and microstructure control and mechanical properties of advanced structural metallic materials. His lab is counted as one of the world leading groups on bulk nanostructured metals. The lab aims to be a place where young students and researchers can independently develop their ability to frontier research with diverse members, including international students and researchers. They have been energetically carrying out research activities, often through collaborations with other groups in various universities, institutes, and industries. Next is Associate Professor Sakamoto from the Innovative Systems Laboratory in the Department of Electrical Engineering. In this lab, he conducts research on new human measurement techniques, for example, human imaging through radio waves, wireless human measurement, and some more. The sensor on the video clip enables us to measure the skin surface without wearing anything, no privacy risks. It is one of the unique interdisciplinary researches in Kyoto University, consisting of measurement, engineering, informatic science, and medicine. In addition, Members can work on a wide range of research activities, from basic research based on system theory to applied research to healthcare and medicine. As Professor Sakamoto has performed researches in Netherlands and the United States, 
the lab has access to international joint research network as well. Next, Professor Matsuno from the Department of Mechanical Engineering and Science. He conducts research on understanding human essence and building a machine system useful for human based on mechatronic technology. The research put emphasis on control, biomimetics, interface, and rescue. The lab has three rooms for experiment, and there is even a pool to experiment the robot underwater. There are many kinds of research equipment enough to conduct the relevant researches. Next up is Professor Kagetsu Kengaku, sorry, Kengaku from the Division of Integrated Life Science. The major goal of her lab is to clarify the how a brain is built and the neural circuit is formed by analyzing the migration of neurons and its development. In this lab, seminars are organized all in English to prepare for international conferences. At the seminar, progress of the research is reported including the negative data and the frank discussions are held. In addition to the professors, I'd like to talk about the Institute for Advanced Study. There are many innovative labs under the Institute. For instance, ISEMS, Institute for Integrated Cell Material Science, and ASHIBI, Institute for Advanced Study of Human Biology. Both are established as World Premier Institute Research Center, or WPI, and as a Japanese government initiative. The main language used in WPI is English, and they have the diverse atmosphere welcoming researchers from around the world. Professor Tasuke Honjo, who won the Nobel Prize in 2018, is also affiliated with the Institute. Here is a picture with his lab members when the prize was announced. Professor Shinya Yamanaga, who was also awarded the Nobel Prize in 2012, is currently a director of Center for ITS Cell Research. He and his team are carrying out further research on ITS cells, a new type of pluripotent stem cells first generated in 2006. Please note that so far I have talked about is only a touch of the researchers at Kyoto University. There are many, many more interesting researchers and the labs. Then I'd like to share two video messages from our Indian students. Hello everyone. I'm uh, Ria Sarah de Souza. I'm currently enrolled as a second year doctoral co-student at the Laboratory of Molecular and Cellular Biology at Kyoto University. And my research theme or the main focus of my laboratory is to understand the mechanisms associated with cell death or also known as apoptosis. So my work is mainly related to cell death. Also, before I go into too much of details, I would like to take you on a small journey as to how I chose to come to Kyoto University and choose Japan as my destination for my higher studies. Uh, so all my education up till my master course in biomedical sciences, I did it in uh, India. And after that, I interacted with my master supervisor back in India because he had done his PhD and his postdoctoral studies at the University of Miyazaki in Japan. So he motivated me to go abroad, especially choose Japan as my destination because he has the research experience and he motivated me that I too could go and experience the same. And right from my younger age, I was sort of into Japan because of its various culture and traditions. And I really wanted to take that as an advantage and come over here. And why I chose Kyoto University because it is one among the best with regard to research. And it is a very good platform for the younger generation. If you want to really build up on your confidence, your communication skills, and if you want to make friends from all around the world, 
you can just come here and experience all that in just one campus. So I would really recommend you before you check into any university, go through the guidelines, check why exactly you want to go there and what work you want to focus on. That way you can really motivate yourself and come over, be it any university, anywhere in the world, there are a lot of challenges associated once you try to do your higher studies abroad. Language is one of the most common barrier we notice when we go abroad. But you don't have to worry, especially if you come over to Kyoto University because they have really good English teaching programs. And also you can learn Japanese when you have your own free time. You don't have to uh, pressurize yourself too much. You can learn it at your own pace. And uh, the people and the citizens of Japan are very friendly and very hospitable. So you don't have to uh, not try to be yourself. Just be free, enjoy your life, and uh, you just need to work hard and achieve your goals. That's all I would like to say. And uh, yeah, all the best for your future. Thank you. Uh, I hope you're doing good. Uh, my name is Anirban. I am from Tripura in India. I have a very long and warm association with Kyoto University. I came to Kyoto University in 2015 uh, as a Mac scholar. Uh, I came to study earthquake engineering. I finished my master's in 2018 from the Graduate School of Engineering. I continued with the PhD program and very recently I defended my PhD thesis and I'll be graduating in March 2021. April onwards, I will be joining a Japanese university uh, as a research associate. So yeah, I, I plan to continue in Japan for a while. Uh, my field of research is earthquake engineering and Japan being one of the most earthquake prone nations in the world was an obvious choice for me. My lab was in the Disaster Prevention Research Institute at Kyoto University. A very unique characteristic of Kyoto University is the freedom of research. You also get to work alongside uh, giants from your field and you get exposed to world-class facilities for your research. And over my last six years at Kyoto University, I had the opportunity to present my research output at conferences both domestic and abroad. So if you are someone who is considering a postgraduate study and want to work in a world-class facility alongside giants of your field, I think Kyoto University is the place for you. So all the best and hoping to see you soon at Kyoto University. Good luck. Uh, I hope. So if you are interested in studying at Kyoto University for a degree, you will study under one of the 10 undergraduate for the 18 graduate schools. In most programs, Japanese is used as the basic language. But we also have English medium programs, including joint double degree programs with overseas universities. And for the postgraduate programs, as I have shown some, there are a number of levels you can actually learn and do research in English. For postgraduate application, it is generally quite difficult to find your intended graduate school and program at the site. For example, if you are interested in chemistry, there could be at least six options you can take, like the graduate school of science or engineering or agriculture, energy science, medicine, bio studies, human environmental sciences, and so on. It's very common that research in certain fields are conducted across graduate schools at Kyoto University. And therefore, we suggest prospective students to look for their potential supervisor first. You can search for your supervisor through keywords on our activity database. And when you have found the supervisor to best match your research interest, you can then decide the graduate school from their affiliation. Once you have selected your potential supervisor, please then apply to AAO. AAO application is a kind of service to connect prospective students with their preferred supervisor. If the applicant receives a positive result, they will then communicate with the supervisor and discuss to actually proceed with the application to the graduate school of their choice. 
Then, please let me explain about undergraduate study options in English at Kyoto University. The only program we have entirely in English at undergraduate level is civil engineering. This is a four-year program leading to a Bachelor of Engineering. The program aims students to learn to design and manage civil infrastructures while considering global environmental issues in urban and regional areas. The program starts in April and the application period is from late August to early October. For details, please visit the program website. Then I'd like to introduce this very unique program, Kyoto University International Undergraduate Program for Kyoto IAP. This is a four and a half year program, which enables students to learn Japanese and obtain the bachelor degree at the undergraduate school of their choice. As Japanese training will be provided through the program, no Japanese language ability is required to begin with. In the first six months, Students take intensive Japanese language training and some free foundation classes in English. Then they will enroll in one of the 10 undergraduate schools that I showed earlier. During first and second year, they will study mainly in English while continuing to study Japanese language classes. When they get into the third and the fourth year, they will be able to study their major subject in Japanese. Students under this program will receive full scholarship. For details, please check the program website. Next, I'll talk about how much it will cost. Since Kyoto University is a national university, tuition fees are relatively reasonable and around 5,000 US dollars per year. There is one time only admission fee of around 3,000 US dollars for the first year. There is no difference in fees between international students and the local students to study at Kyoto University. A wide variety of scholarships are available for international students. But today, I'd like to focus on explaining this Japanese government scholarship called the Mixed Scholarship, the Embassy Recommendation Scheme, in detail. I suggest the student who want to study at the postgraduate program with a scholarship to consider this first. You will receive over 1,000 US dollars per month, and the scholarship covers application fee, admission fee, and tuition fees, as well as one round trip flight ticket to come to Japan. To apply for the mixed embassy recommendation, you must submit your application to the Japanese embassy or consulate in India for the initial screening. They will accept applications around April and May, so now is a good timing to start your preparation if you intend to come and study in 2022. If you pass the initial screening, then you need to obtain a letter of provisional acceptance from the university in around August. I encourage you to start looking for a potential supervisor as early as possible. As I explained before, to start communication with a potential supervisor at Kyoto University, please apply to AAO, a free online application system. Average living cost in Kyoto is around 800 US dollars per month. Of course, it could be higher or cheaper depending on your lifestyle. We have seven jobs available for our international students. If you live in one of them, the monthly rent fees will range from around 115 to 350 US dollars for single type rooms. There are special supports available, especially for international students on campus including Japanese language lessons for free of charge. So this is the end of my presentation. I hope you could find any information useful. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us by email here. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Kawano. 
um it was a very nice presentation and very happy to know about the facts the research information and uh, many uh, nobel prize winners and an opportunity to work under them and also a lot of information on the um, masters program as well so thank you for presenting today and uh, now we will next move on to Mr. Kiyoshi Takeda, the Director of International Office, Uni uh, Kyoto University of Advanced Sciences. Over to you, Takeda-san. Thank you very much for introducing me today. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Dan Takeda. I work at the Kyoto University of Advanced Science as an International Office Director. I'm very excited to talk about our all new all English engineering program for, for students like you, students, international students like you. And let me start sharing my screen with you now. Hello, I hope you can hear me very well, uh, very clearly, and I, I hope you can see my slides very clearly. Uh, hello, once again, my name is Kiyoshi Takeda. I work at uh, Kyoto University of Advanced Science. Um, today, um, um, in my presentation, I'd like to cover a, a bit of uh, why Japan, or uh, why, why you want to consider Japan as a, your study destination, and a bit about Kyoto, and then also followed by the specifically about Kyoto University of Advanced Science, and also it's a faculty of engineering and entry requirements or scholarships. I think that I'll spend most of the time to, uh, talking about our undergraduate programs and undergraduate programs. And in addition to that, um, before just wrapping up uh, my presentation, I would like to discuss a bit of our uh, postgraduate programs as well. Before getting into the details, why don't I play a short video, a short clips, so that you can feel more comfortable, you can feel more familiar with the Kyoto University of Advanced Science Faculty of Engineering. What's in Kyoto? What's KUAS? Kyoto, the old capital of Japan, is home to many of Japan's most important world heritage sites. While Kyoto is well known as a popular tourist attraction, the largest and most important economy in Kyoto is its manufacturing and technology sector. Situated at this crossroads of history, technology, culture, and nature, is Kyoto University of Advanced Science, a new type of university that seeks to incorporate Kyoto's cultural wealth into international, state-of-the-art education. Here is a look at some of the facilities the building features. The workshops are available for free to students 24 hours a day and provide the tools and materials to craft nearly anything imaginable. Elsewhere in the building, challenging research is being carried out every day. There is also a large library, ideal for self-study as well as group discussions. The Faculty of Engineering has great facilities, but that's not all the school has to be proud of. The professors teaching at KUAS hail from all over the world. All lectures are held in English. In addition, all international engineering students are provided with intensive Japanese language courses. The Capstone Project, the first of its kind in Japan, is designed to pit teams of students against realistic challenges presented by over 50 real companies. These unique features will allow KUAS graduates to work immediately anywhere in the world. 
KUAS represents a new model of university unlike Japan has ever seen. Join us at KUAS and be a street smart global engineer. Let me or let me discuss a bit on why study in Japan for um, uh, for those who are interested in and doing engineering programs in Japan. Um, now I, I would say or now is the best time you know for you to think about Japan as a, your study destination if you are interested in becoming engineers in Japan, because in my slides you know, mentioned in my slides in twenty as of twenty twenty there are three hundred seventy thousand too few engineers by. Uh, 2030, uh, there will be 790,000, 790,000 uh, too few engineers. In, in other words, the, the Japanese company across the in industry chronically suffer from a great shortage of uh, talented, educated, skilled engineers. And uh, you may be wondering how much you can earn as a, on average as a skilled engineers. And my answer to your question is that Japan is still the, the best place where you can earn the most among other Asian countries, even compared to China, even compared to Korea, even compared to Hong Kong, Singapore, Japan is the best place where you can earn the most on average. And because of that, precisely because of this reason, and there has been a growing number of Indians who choose come to work and to live in Japan. As you can see on the slides, and back in 2014, there are only 28,000 Indians who are living in Japan. And only five years later, the number was shot up, up into 38,000 or who will choose to come to work as the engineers. So this is a, these are the reasons why I'm discussing now is the best time for you to think about, to consider Japan as your study destiny, specifically for those who are interested in becoming engineers in Japan. Um, Kyoto, um, beautiful cities like you see, and there is also a beautiful museum um, the, the specifically features a beautiful comic looks like mangas. And uh, as I mentioned in the previous uh, presentations already, there are world-class, first-class companies that are located in Japan, located in Kyoto cities. I think this is a, um, I think a, a significant piece of information for those who choose to come to Kyoto uh, because these companies are quickly translated into a great job opportunity upon the completion of our engineering program. Uh, Kyoto University of Advanced Science. Uh, our university is a private university, but accredited by the Japanese government. It started in 1969. It's located in Kyoto Prefecture. It has 3,600 uh, 3, students, out of which there are 80 international students, mainly from East Asian countries like China, South Korea, Malaysia, Hong Kong. It has uh, five faculties. In the, now I, I'd like to introduce specific, specifically the brand, its brand new faculty of engineering today because uh, its entire program is conducted in the English language, not in the Japanese language, which are, is gonna be a great advantage for students like, uh, like you who are already fluent in the English language. And um, before getting to the well, details of our program, so I'm very proud to introduce, uh, introduce that great news to you today. There has been a, two Indian our students already accepted for our 2021 undergrad program intake. Um, at, uh, they are, if I'm not mistaken, they are from Uttar Pradesh. From, and also there is already one Indian doctoral student accepted for our 2020 program intakes. So uh, if you may, you may be wondering whether to uh, uh, go to Japan or go to a KUS or not for your study destinations, and you are not going to be the one, only, only Indians, you, you are going to be, uh, you're going to be join your our generations of Indians who say, made the same de decisions as to come to our KUS. And what really, what really sets us apart from other universities is this person, Mr. Nagamori Shigenobu, 
Our Mr. Nagamori is the uh, CEO, current CEO of a uh, company called NIDEC, N-I-D-E-C. And it NIDEC is the largest model company in the world. It has 300 offices in 50 countries, and it happens to have five branches in India as well. And the um, entire workforce at NIDEC is 140,000 employees, which happens to be exceed those of Apple, even Google. So Mr. Nagamori, back in 2018, he became the chairman of KUIS. And as soon as he, as soon as he took the position, um, he made the decisions to invest as much as 120 million US dollars in, in KUIS in order to found the new KUIS faculty of engineering to create a new generation of street to smart engineers. Once, so the most important message that he wants to convey to you today, he wants to hire many engin engineers from India for NIDIC and as well as other companies across the industry in Japan. Um, this is a picture of our faculty of a beautiful engineering building. I hope you like it so much and you, you really want to explore uh, our university very soon. Uh, let me talk about KUS and the graduate engineering programs there. Uh, of features of, there are four specific features of the faculty of engineering. Number one, like you said, and this entire program is conducted in the English language. Number two, still we're gonna give you, we're gonna provide you with an opportunity to learn the Japanese intensively with no additional cost. Uh, cost. And also, this is a very practical, very practical program where you are supposed to work closely with current engineers currently and working in the industry. Number four, there's going to be our, uh, there, uh, you can expect to extend it, our career support uh, from a department that specifically are assigned to help international students find a job opportunity uh, in Japan. Um, so our program is the, uh, very unique in, in the sense that you can have exposures to uh, computers and uh, mechanical engineering. Sorry, uh, coming back slightly. Uh, mechanical engineering, also electrical engineering. Um, so, you, so that you can acquire solid understanding of core engineering skills in various fields needed to solve problems innovative in real life. More specifically, our, all, 13, all these 13 engineering measures can be learned in just in one place, we, namely KUAS, Mechanical Electrical System Engineering Program. And uh, as I said, um, this is a very practical program. So uh, if you take a look at the year three, year four on the slides, and you see a capstone project uh, where you are supposed to work closely with the current engineers who are currently working in an industry. And you go back and forth between a campus and the offices on a, on a regular basis, you are uh, expected to develop a practical skills so that you can work immediately or uh, from day one when you join the real industry after the completion of our, our program, very practical. Uh, tuition levels are uh, liable. Uh, on average, we run this program for four years. So on average, you'll be expected to pay 1.5 Japanese million yen on average per year. And uh, our, are, there are, I'm, I am very proud, proud to introduce a, a, a varying degrees of, degrees of scholarship programs available at KUS uh, from 30% waiver and through 50% waiver, even as much as 100% tuition waiver programs available, depending on your academic levels. And, um, and uh, I'm very I'm pleased to uh, let you know that we are still taking we are still taking applications from around the world for this specific under and undergraduate program. Actually, our application windows here, right here, opened just are are just a week ago, on February 18th, and I, um, 
application windows will open until March 14th, 2020. These are all, these are for our September 2021, September 2021 program of Intex. So if you're interested in becoming engineers and if you are still interested in applying to a KUS, you, I can, you can still make it in, uh, in, a, in a nutshell. So please um, go to our website to check our details or on that, uh, to know more about how to uh, apply to KUS undergraduate programs. So entry requirements, uh, you need to have, as a, given the nature of an engineering program anywhere, anywhere in the world, you are supposed to have, or you will be expected to have a comprehensive understanding of physics and math are equivalent to upper secondary school level, algebra, geometry, precalculus, statistics, force and motion, waves, electricity, and magneticism, atom structures. Um, and uh, I'm very happy to share with you that great news that the KUS accepts a central board of secondary education test results of yours. And you can are even are pred your predicted scores at the central board of secondary education test is also acceptable. So I would highly recommend you to go to our, our, our website, organize your documents, and before you are, so that you can are, are immediately are ready to apply to KUS for September 2021 program in Czech. Uh, alternatively, our, our KUS also accepts I, I international baccalaureate diploma and also alternatively SAT tests and ACT scores also are acceptable by KUS for your uh, annual application. Um, this is a set of uh, your application documents. Um, these are just a quite a regular set of applications, application documents for anywhere in the world. And just let me walk you through a bit um, uh, uh, how uh, our application systems and online system looks like. Um, Tau, and you can on this page you can create your account, and uh, you see, um, sorry, too, too quick, too quick. Or uh, you see, or uh, on the right hand side, that, you know, what kind of documents you are supposed to um, upload. Um, and depending on the index uh, that you are uh, done, red that circles in the red on the right hand or on the left hand side, and very easy, very intu intuitive. Once you are successfully created your account, so don't get discouraged um, in the system. And uh, to know more about our website um, application and uh, procedures, then please go to the KUS website. And uh, um, also, let me also uh, share with you that we do uh, run uh, uh, programs for PhD or also uh, master's programs. And unfortunately, our, um, um, our uh, application deadlines is over for um, September intake. So please you know, expect to our new information come up around March and you know, 4th in this year uh, so that you can start applying around October this year. Um, okay, uh, thank you very much for your kind, kind attention. Um, if, you, or if you have further questions, or just go to our website and type in your questions, and we, we are more than happy to answer your questions immediately. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Takeda-san, for a detailed presentation, and also very happy to know about all English multidisciplinary in, uh, engineering programs that is being offered at KUAS. And also it's heartening and, you know, very happy to understand that there is a great demand for engineers in Japan. Hope we have many Indian in, uh, engineers going to Japan and also the aspirants to go to Japan and study engineering in KUAS. Sure. So thank you very much. And now we move on to Ritsumeikan Asia Pacific University. 
we have Ms. I. Yamamoto, the Senior Admin, uh, Admissions Counselor, uh, to present about Ritsumekan Asia Pacific University. Over to you, Yamamoto san. Hi, konnichiwa, Yamamoto Ari desu. Mera namai hai. And my colleague, Ms. Tifti. Ah, mute all this. Hi, hi. Hello, everyone. Okay. All right. So, um, just to introduce about us, we are Ritsumeikan Asia Pacific University, and then you will be hearing from Ritsumeikan University later on. So, we, Ritsumeikan Asia Pacific University and Ritsumeikan University, are in the same trust, but two different universities. Ritsumeika University, you will be hearing later, is very traditional university. And then they decided to create a new university with new concepts in um, 20 years ago, which is us, Ritsumeika Asia Pacific University. So uh, in the beginning, I will show the short movie to introduce Ritsumeika Asia Pacific University, APU. Hey guys, this is 2018 Spring Entrance Ceremony and I'm Saad. And I'm Ruth from APU Student Social Media Unit and today we're on a mission. Saad, what's the mission? The mission is to make friends from as many countries as we can. And this semester we have students from 38 different countries joining us here at APU. So let's wait no more and meet them. Let's go. Why did you choose to study in Japan? Uh, ramen? Ramen? I like ramen too. I mean, yeah. that's a... that, that was the main reason I came here. So guys, uh, what's your name and where are you from? Uh, my name is Vivek Yogi and I'm from Nepal. My name is Pradyut and I'm from Nepal as well. I'm from Rwanda, from Nigeria. From Sri Lanka. From Korea. I'm from Fiji. From Russia. From Canada. From Azerbaijan. From France. From Finland, but I study in Norway. The USA. Germany. From Uganda. From Mongolia. From India. From Thailand. From Indonesia. <laughs> Diversity. Diversity. Yes. Able, being able to meet a lot of people from different walks of life and backgrounds. It is a very small place but it's also very like friendly and you have everything you need in the like around you you know everyone is so friendly here and uh, i have so far i've found so many great kids with so many friends family here we're a family Thank here you. that's great it's pretty amazing um it's very different from home but you really start to enjoy the culture First of all would be the culture, I guess. The people are really nice over here. For me, it's also the same culture and I really wanted to learn like time management and business ethics from Japanese people. I like to uh, engage with Japanese culture much more uh, in APU. Like I want to engage with the locals, not, uh, not just international students. I want to engage in local cuisine, like local traditions, tea ceremonies and etc. It's so beautiful, it's beautiful. I love it here. I, I feel like at home, I don't see the like homesick. I don't. Oh, no, yeah, uh, yeah so me too. I feel like I'm at home. <laughs> Everybody's so friendly. Everybody's so just lovely. Everything is lovely in Japan right now. Well, it's a very multicultural community, so I aim to get a lot of friends here uh -huh. and make good relationships with people. I'm looking forward to very many women and to learn new things from APU. So 
that brings us to the end of today's ceremony. We hope you had a great time as we did. And congratulations to all the new students. And wish you all the best for your future. And all that's left to say is, Til until next, next time. time. Thank you. Hi, let's go to the slides. I ate ramen for this lunch, by the way. <laughs> okay, so this is our campus. It's on the top of the mountain. As you see, you can see the clear sky, have the fresh air from the campus. So it's greatly uh, surrounded by your nature. And I said APU uh, established uh, with the new concept. So the concept was APU will have 50% uh, of all the students and all the faculty members. And this is how we look after 20 years. We have 5,600 students in total, and 50% are international students, and 50% are Japanese students. So as you saw in the movie, we have students from Africa, India, Japan, UK, Australia, US, are very diverse. Also international faculty members, 50% are from overseas. Let's go to the next slide. What you can study at APU, we have two colleges. One is College of International Management, where you receive Bachelor of um, Business Administration. The other is College of Asia Pacific Studies, where you receive a uh, Bachelor of Social Sciences. So going back to the slide for APM, College of International Management, you see AACSP accreditation on the right top. This is accreditation only top 5% of all the business school receive in the world. So if you want to study business in Japan, in English, this global standard for undergrad, the only choice you have is APU. The other college, APS, College of Asia Pacific Studies, we have four specialization here environment and development, culture, society, media, hospitality and tourism, international relations and peace studies. And then you can study uh, all the subjects in the first year, and then later on in your second year or even third year, you can choose which specializations you want to um, major. And just to give you an idea about the career for our graduates uh, from APS, some of the students work in NGOs or United Nations as well as private companies. So uh, last December, our alumni from APU uh, who are working for United Nations held a um, career webinar for APU current students. And for career overall, uh, APU has quite a high job placement rate, 96. And for Indian students, actually uh, last year, more than half of them chose to uh, found a job in Japan. And then I know many uh, Indian students who work for, uh, such as Kose, this is one of the biggest Japanese cosmetic company, or Dentsu, uh, one of the biggest adv advertising, advertisement company, which is uh, also difficult for Japanese students to get in. Sugoku yushu desu. And the next slide, you see the major employers. Um, you see Apple International, Google Japan, Robert Walters. Also in the uh, right side, you see the graduate schools uh, where our graduate goes. So Australian National University or University of Oxford, Oxford uh, excellent universities. And if you think uh, Japan is expensive in the first place, uh, this is not quite true. APU provides tuition reduction scholarship to international students. So uh, up to 100%. And so we evaluate these four things for to decide tuition reduction. If you want to make a memo, please do so. Academic record, interview results, English proficiency score, and extracurricular activities. So if you do any volunteer or join sports competition, those are highly evaluated. 
So tuition will be different from each student depending on the screening results. If you receive zero tuition reduction scholarship, you see the top uh, right. Yes, uh, tuition itself is around nine lakh India rupee. But let's say you receive 65% tuition reduction, the tuition itself will be around 3.1 lakh, including cost of living, renters, insurance, etc. in the first year, total cost will be around 13 lakh. Just an example. So you may receive 80% even. Hi. This is application period uh, for Indian students. It's coming in March 22nd to April 14th. Uh, last chance for September 2021 enrollment for undergraduate. And today you only hear from me and Dipti Sang. She's also alumni, but we have the webinar, recorded webinar with our alumni who is currently working in Japan. Um, please do visit this link and then hear from our alumni as well. These are the documents you are required when you apply. Uh, you can do, you can uh, apply all online. So application information, uh, you are uh, asked to write four essays, short essays, such as what you want to study at APU. And then including, I mean, based on these essays, we will have the interview with you. Academic transcripts, one letter of recommendation, language proficiency test score, application fee payment, which is around 4,000 India rupee. Kana. And for uh, uh, option documents, extracurricular activities, reports and certificates, standardized test results. But as I said, if you have involved in any extracurricular activities, please do submit those activities and the report, certificates, anything you can submit. These are highly evaluated. Hi. These are the language proficiency test score minimum score. So IELTS, if IELTS 6.0, TOEFL IBT 75, uh, we also receive um, accept TOEFL IBT special home edition or IELTS indicator. I realize Indian students have high English score, so I highly recommend for you to submit the score. Over to Dipti san Thank you, Aisan. Hajime Mashti, Dipti Tumushimas. Ima Epiunu, Deri Office Utanto Steorimas. Hello, everyone. I'm Dipti. I am uh, heading the Delhi Office of APU. I'm also an alumni of APU. Um, so Aisan just told you about the graduate undergraduate school, and I will brief you about our graduate school programs. Um, so in um, uh, at the graduate level, we have uh, two schools. One is Graduate School of Asia Pacific Studies, which is Social Sciences College. Uh, here you can choose master's degree in Asia Pacific Studies or master's in international cooperation policy. Uh, these are both two year courses and you can specialize uh, in either of the following in master's in Asia Pacific studies, which is a BA degree, B, uh, which is an MA degree. So it will be master's of social sciences. Uh, you can specialize either in international relations or society and culture and master's in international cooperation policy. You can specialize in either of these four. We also have a PhD degree, which is in Asia Pacific studies. Uh, the other school that we have is Graduate School of Management. Um, it is, uh, again, a two-year course, and you can specialize in either of these four uh, majors. Uh, Aysen did mention about AACSB accreditation, and apart from that, our MBE college also has AMBA accreditation, so it is very highly accredited, uh, and it puts us both these accreditation put us in the top 2% of the business schools all over uh, the world. Um, and owing to these accreditations, we also uh, need to have, uh, whoever is applying to management school, they need to have three years of working experience. Uh, it's mandatory. Um, 
now some facts about our uh, graduate school. Uh, so 98% of the international students, 98% uh, of the graduate students are international. And um, which is why all the classes are conducted in English. So it is not a prerequisite for you to know Japanese if you want to apply to our graduate school. Uh, but if you want, if you're keen to study Japanese, in that case, you can uh, take it as an elective subject. There are eight credits that you can take uh, for Japanese language. Um, our 95% of students in graduate school are scholarship holders. They, um, they have secured um, some or the other scholarship. Um, so our graduate school is really small. We just have 200 students. So um, the student teacher ratio is really uh, focused. It's three to one. And um, as I mentioned earlier also that 100% classes are taught in English. Um, so um, just like our graduate undergraduate school, we have tuition reduction scholarships in graduate school also, which range between 30% to 100%. Um, so the tuition fee uh, for our graduate school of Asia Pacific uh, studies is 2,800,000 JPY, which is approximately 20 lakh Indian rupees. And uh, for the graduate school of management, it is about 3,800,000 JPY, which is about 26 lakh uh, rupees. But again, as I said that, you know, most of our students are scholarship holders in our graduate school. So you can apply uh, for tuition reduction scholarships and you can apply for any external scholarship. Uh, so we have MEXT University recommended and also Embassy recommended. Um, there are a few other scholarships which are equally lucrative such as ADB. So uh, you can certainly apply for those during your enrollment. Um, we are currently accepting applications for our graduate school. The deadline uh, is March 31st. Uh, so you can go to our website and check out more details or be in touch with um, either me. If you are in Delhi or uh, areas around Delhi, you can contact me. And uh, we have another representative uh, from APU who is uh, based out of Mumbai. Her name is Ishana. She's not here today, but you can be in touch if you're anywhere outside Delhi or NCR uh, for any of your requirements. And these are some of our links. Uh, this is for the undergraduate website, graduate website and YouTube. You can visit us and follow us on social media. Comenas, I forgot to mention one thing for undergrad. So for undergrad, all, uh, almost all the classes are held in English as well. So you don't need to know any Japanese language when you apply. You can take regular uh, lectures in English. And when you enter, you start to learn Japanese language. One year um, Japanese study is required. Hi. Okay, yes. thank you. That's uh, from us. Thank you, uh, Yamamoto-san and Deepti-san. It was a very lively information presentation from you. Thank you. Now, can we now move on to Ritsumekan University? Ms. Uh, Priyanka Bangia, the Deputy Director, Ritsumekan University, India office. Over to you, Priyanka-san. Uh, so very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining the session today and uh, talking about Ritsumikan University. So this big R in Japan is very popular by the name of Ritsumikan University. So where are we located? We are located in Kansai region. That's about two hours, 30 minutes from Tokyo. And it's fully connected by plane, train and bus. So we have four campuses located in three different locations. All of them are interconnected. They are about one hour away from each other. Kyoto. Kyoto is very historical, nostalgic and student friendly uh, city. When I talk about the Kyoto city. Shiga. Shiga is rich in nature, industrial and relaxed. 
So this is our Shiga uh, campus that you can see in the picture. Osaka, uh, we have a campus in Osaka, Ibaraki. When I talk about the city, it's very vibrant, welcoming and commercial hub. So Kyoto as a city has about 10% of student population. So it's a very student friendly city with so many uh, universities and colleges in Kyoto. And also anybody coming to Japan uh, do go to Tokyo and Kyoto. So it's a very, very uh, people in Kyoto and nearby area are very familiar to uh, foreign faces and it is very, very comfortable for them to settle in. It's a world's safest student city. Kyoto, Osaka, Kobe was ranked number one for, for safety uh, in the world. So Ritsumikan University was founded in 1900. So it's about more than 120 years old. We have 16 undergraduate colleges, 20 graduate schools, top global university Japan, 36,000 plus student and one, one lakh applicant. So as part of a top global university Japan, uh, we are uh, we started in global with the Global 30 project in 2009, and now a uh, top global university project. The role is to help Indian students, help students from other country to go and study in Japan. So the research implemented uh, private sector industry. We are ranked number one for the research funding. We have got 1.3 billion yen for conducting the research. We are ranked number one in Western Japan with 139 foreign faculties teaching in our, on our campuses. So we have 2,450 foreign students from 71 countries and region as per May 2020 data. So we have international partner institution. There are about 461 universities and institution from 68 countries and regions. And also students get an opportunity to do a study abroad. Uh, opportunities are there, whether they want to do one semester to a short duration program in any of the partner institution we have uh, with no extra charge. With COVID, uh, uh, the university and the government has given it. It has it was given an emergency support package, especially to the student whose family income were affected by COVID, and there were free loans, financial aid, and device free loan services for online classes were given to all students, and support for online learning, campus life, and job hunting was also provided. So we have about four, 430 clubs in circle. The child can choose from any of them. So part-time job. Uh, when the student comes to Japan at the airport, the child can get a work permit uh, to do a part-time job. And the child gets 28 hours per week. So whether they want, want to do on campus or off campus, both the opportunities are available. So there's a student support office that provides support for career planning, academic guidance, visa application, housing and accommodation support, study abroad support, and on-campus medical support is provided. So the accommodation, if I talk about the accommodation in all our campus, it's either on or off campus. So the off-campus accommodation is about five to 15 minutes walking walk away. But some children, they do have a bicycle or they can take a bus so they can use any of the medium uh, to go to the campus. So there's a very strong student peer support. We have 3,280 student staff that is available for helping each and every student coming to the university, settling them in the accommodation and supporting them in every possible way. So there's a career planning support office. So the child can take the support, whether the child wants to work in Japan after the uh, program or whether they want to do masters in Japan, they can take full support from the office. So what are the key features uh, to study in Ritsumikan? I will say scholarship. Uh, there is a 20% tuition reduction that is given to all children 
um, who apply, who gets through Ritsumikan program. And a 50 and 100% scholarship is based on your application and interview in most of the programs. And we have accommodation available that I've already mentioned. Everything is online. There's an online interview, documents are online. You have to send it online. And the recommendation also has to be sent by the school online. And the fourth is English only. So you don't need Japanese. Uh, the programs are completely taught in English. And for most of the program, the Japanese is pass, part of the module. Uh, so you will be learning Japanese uh, while you will be doing your program. But when you leave India or when you're studying, all the programs are taught in English. So there are study abroad opportunities that I've already mentioned. So talking about the programs, uh, we have five English programs. Uh, programs that are available. The first two, GLA and JP program, they are collaborative degrees. And the GS, CRPS, and ISSC program, they are single degrees. So the first program, the College of Global Liberal Arts, it's a dual degree with Australian National University, where you get two degrees and bachelors of Global Liberal Arts and bachelors of Asia Pacific Affairs. You'll be studying three years in Ritsumekan, Japan, and one year in ANU, Australia. So while you will be in Japan for three years, you will also be taught by Australian professors. So these are the key features that we have in the program, social change, evaluation of market economy, design, society, knowledge, innovation, contemporary Japan, politics, and government, and many other keywords that are mentioned a part of the program. So uh, this is about ANU. It's number one in Australia, 29th in the world, and eighth in the world of politics and international studies. So the second program is a joint degree with American University, and it's in Washington, DC, where the child will be doing two years in Ritsumekan, Japan, and two years in Washington, DC, American University. Uh, so we, we have a yearly intake of 25 students and the key features for the program are the keywords US-Japan relation, global and comparative governors, peace, global security, conflict and resolution, identity, race, and many other keywords are mentioned. So this is about Washington, D.C., founded in, uh, in Washington, D.C., American University, founded in 1893, ranked number ninth in the IR field among the U.S. universities. So the third program is a global study major in our Kyoto campus. Uh, so it is bachelor's in international relation. It's a four-year full-time program. Uh, the keywords are international law, peace and conflict studies, security studies, international human rights, the United Nations, global environmental issues, gender issues, race and ethnicity, and global media. This program, we are the only member from Japan that have got a full accreditation of APSIA. It's called as Association of Professional School of International Affairs. And the other members who are part of APSI are American University, Columbia, Harvard, and Yale. So these are some of the Ivy League universities. And also to tell you about this program, uh, we have professors who have worked in United Nations, WHO, and many other organizations that will be teaching, they teach the students um, for this particular program, International Relation. And the fourth program is Community and Regional Policy Study Major. It's in Osaka Ibaraki campus. This is a picture. It's a very new campus, a very modern campus with the Starbucks inside the campus and a big area. It's very, uh, the modern infrastructure. So it's called as Bachelor's in Policy Science with a four year full time. And uh, it's in, it has the keywords, urban planning for sustainable city, community safety, development economics, environmental policies, global public policies, social welfare policies, and many other keywords are mentioned for this particular program. We also have a MEX scholarship for this program. 
So the child applying for this program can, if get selected, can get a max scholarship of fully funded four years, uh, tuition fee, living expense, and an airfare to Japan. And the last program is Information System Science and Engineering. It's, it's in a Shiga campus, and this is a picture of our Shiga campus. And uh, it's, it's, the name is Bachelors of Engineering. The degree awarded would be Bachelors of Engineering. And it's a four-year full-time program. And the keywords for this program are IoT, Business Intelligence, Data Science, Artificial Intelligence, Robot Technology, Human interfa Interface, Effective engineering, digital human, and virtual reality advanced computer graphics. We also have the master's and PhD program uh, in international relation, policy science, economics, science and engineering, information science and engineering, and life sciences. So if you want to know more detail about master's and PhD, you can email it to us. I will be sharing the email ID. So how to apply? Uh, it would be uh, very, very simple. You just have to go on this link that will all, we will be sharing. Uh, so yeah, so you can go on this link that's mentioned here and download and consult uh, the application handbook, activate your Ritzme account, pay your application fee. It's about 5,000 yen, about 3,500 Indian rupees and upload and send all the documents online. So the documents that would be required for most of the programs are passport copy. For most of the program, we have an English waiver. So you just need to get a letter from the school. Only our collaborative degrees, the first two with the American University and Australian National University, you have to give the score of IELTS, TOEFL or Duolingo. And for uh, you also need a recommendation letter uh, from the school. The format is mentioned in the application form. You just need to give it to the school. They will fill it up and email it to the university. We have academic transcript for all uh, grader, grades of high school or senior secondary education will be required. And essays, uh, it's, it's there in the application handbook. They are very, very important for the evaluation and certificate of high school graduation. Uh, again, it's mentioned in the application handbook how you have to prepare this. So the screening is very simple. It is the document screening and uh, interview and the final result. Especially for our ISSC program, we don't have interviews. It's just the document screening and followed by the final result. So our application are open for most of the programs. Uh, so uh, open are opening this month actually. So it's from February 17 to March 9th is a deadline. Uh, so you can apply for a global liberal arts program and you can apply for an international program. So the, the dates are the same, February 17 to March 9th. And policy science program, again, the dates are the same. And for information science and engineering, also the dates are same. So talking about the fee structure for our undergraduate program. So it, it is approximately uh, nine to 11 lakhs when I talk about the single degree program, but already mentioned every child will get a minimum of 20% tuition reduction and 50 and 100%. And the living cost of eight to nine lakhs approximately Indian rupees. And um, also we also have many post enrollment scholarship, JESO scholarship, is also available. Uh, so once you reach the university, you can apply for any of them. And for any other uh, query, you can email it to me. Uh, just to mention about, uh, just to share about me, uh, I, I've been working with Ritsume Can India office for the last 10 years. And my work is to help and support Indian students going to Ritsume Can. So any query that you have, I'll be very, very happy uh, to uh, solve all your queries. Uh, you can email on newdelhi at st.ritsume.ac.jp. And you can also uh, follow our Facebook page. And the email ID of Japan is also mentioned, hello at st.ritsume.ac.jp. And our website details are also mentioned. So now I'll be showing a very small video of one day uh, in Japan. So yeah. Places that 
that you'd never find I know something about a state of mind I've got the dreamer in me The roses bloom and the sun will shine Leave your troubles in the world behind Stars shine brighter when you free your mind I've got the dreamer in me Thank you very much, Priyanka San. This was a lovely presentation about Ritzmakan University. Yeah, thank you all. We had a very informative presentations from all five top universities of Japan. Hope this information about courses, fee, scholarship opportunities would help the aspirants aiming for higher education at Japan. Thank you all once again. And there will be a question and answer session to be continued. Request all to all the presenters to be present for the Q&A. Thank you for.